for coming to the Global AI Weekly event. Um, today, I'm going to have two sessions, actually. The first session, which is uh, what we cover now, it's about AI and cognitive services and Power BI. And in the afternoon, I will have another session about automated machine learning and Power BI as well. So a little bit uh, background about myself. My name is uh, Ashraf Bunim. I work as a strategic management consultant at the city of Toronto. I was one of the early adopters of actually Power BI. I've been active in the community and also the co-lead and the co-organizer of the Power BI user group community. We have a very active community, Power BI and Power Platform in general, Power BI, Power Apps, and Microsoft uh, Automate. Uh, we have a very active user group, we meet on a monthly basis, we build a community practice where we share knowledge and experience. So for those of you who are interested to learn more about Power BI and other uh, Power Platform tools like Power Apps and Automate, please I encourage everyone to join our user group. Uh, you can find us easily on meetup.com. Uh, also I'm the co-organizer of the Power BI World Tour event. Uh, this year we had the third, for the third year, uh, we started 2017 in Toronto, 2018 was in Montreal, and uh, 2019 we, uh, we had it here back in Toronto as well. It's an annual event, so please uh, follow us on meetup.com because uh, next year we will announce it once we schedule. Uh, I'm also active in the community in general, and because of that I was uh, uh, awarded the Microsoft MDB Awards, since for the most valuable professional, and I'm lucky to be one of the 12 MDB uh, uh, in data platform in particular here in Canada. I'm also the co-author of the first Power BI MDB book. Uh, this book actually was uh, published in August 2019, and it was the first MDB book that is written by MDB from all over the world. So we have uh, 22 chapters uh, written by 22 MDBs, every chapter as a standalone topic. So it's completely different topics. They cover most of the topics that you think it's interesting actually in Power BI. And it's available on Amazon uh, as well. So you can find the electronic version as well as the paper, uh, the hardcover version as well, our hard copy version. Um, also, if you attended the keynote uh, this morning, I'm also the uh, um, co-author of the first Microsoft M AI MDB book. Again, it's written by uh, 17 MDBs from all over the world, and everyone wrote a specific chapter. So in this book, I wrote the chapter about AI and cognitive services in Power BI in particular. And in the previous book, I wrote the automated machine learning within uh, Power BI as well. So back to AI. So AI is not just a buzzword. There's a huge business here around the AI. So according to Gartner, the global business value drive from AI in, in 2022 will reach 3.3 trillion dollars. So it's not just a buzzword as it said, it's actually real business. And <coughs> AI covers so many areas here and you can find AI in so many um, uh, areas of business here or domain of business. You can find application for AI in marketing, you can find it in sales, service, finance, operation, workforce. And uh, as uh, Bruno said this morning as well, this is the second wave of AI, which is more focusing more on the business AI. And there are still tons of untapped opportunities in so many industries here. So the utilization of AI across the industries is not there yet. We are just starting now with the utilization of AI across so many industries here. And as you see here, like, it's mostly within the technology industry but, and the internet, but outside of that, digitalization is very, very low, as you see. Especially in the financial services, it's very low, it's 2.4%, etc. So, I would say actually there are so many opportunities for the application of AI and cognitive services across so many industries, 
that you really need to explore further and make sure that you understand the concept of AR and the cognitive services to be able to find a good use case and to apply AI and cognitive services in your business. And the challenges are the same common challenges that we have been suffering for so many years. How to get data, how to get good data, how to get reliable data. Then once you have that, it will set the stage actually to start actually your AI and cognitive services initiative within your program. So some basic definitions here about AI. So AI is refers to the technique which enables the machine to mimic human behavior. So any technique the machine can use actually to be able to mimic the human behavior is classified as AI. However, the subset of AI, it's called machine learning. So machine learning is technically a subset of AI which will allow the machine actually to learn from the best experience. So we are not here rule-based AI. Because AI can be outside machine learning if you have a rule-based scenario. So like a robot in a production line, for example. If the whole idea of the robot is to move this part from X, point X to point B, that's rule-based. That's controlled already. That's why there is uh, an area outside machine learning that comes under AI, because it's rule-based. Machine learning, the difference here, machine learning is allowing the machine actually to learn from the best experience without being specific about a particular scenario. And there is also more sophisticated and advanced um, subset of machine learning, it's called deep learning. Deep learning is using more advanced techniques and multi-layer uh, 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 neural network to be able to learn from past experience as well. So, Microsoft Cognitive Services. So, Microsoft actually team, the, the, the team actually came up with some very sophisticated pre-trained models to help us actually utilize those uh, pre-trained models within the tools that we use. Power BI is one of them for sure, but there are so many other areas where you can actually take advantage of those sophisticated pre-chain model, and instead of building them from scratch yourself, you can rely actually on what is already pre-built, pre-trained, and you can just consider and treat those as API, and you can pull those APIs within your application. So there are five pillars here of readily available uh, AI cognitive services that you can leverage right away without the need to rebuild the model yourself. They are classified under vision, so we can have APIs that can have image detection as Bruno covered in, uh, in, in the morning. You can have uh, custom image recognition. You can have emotion recognition, etc. So those are KPIs, just called the API. You pass your data and you will get the result from the API. Also under speech recognition, it can actually, some APIs can help you to um, do a speech to text or text to speech, etc. Language, there are so many APIs for language that can be used for detecting which language is that, and also can help you to uh, do spell check, key phrase extraction, text to translation, etc. And so on. So you get the idea here. So instead of building the model yourself, because if you need to build the model, you have to have like the data science experience, and you have to actually uh, take care of all the constraints and issues around, around building the model itself including any margin of errors, etc. So you have to have the, the data science skills and the expertise to be able to build your model yourself. Why? And if you rely on the Microsoft Cognitive Services API, you treat this as a black box. What you really care about is the business application. You have input, you pass the input to the black box, you get the output, and you, have, you know how to use the output from this API and actually make the business decision based on that. So how about AI and Power BI? So the spectrum here, when people talk about automated machine learning and AI and Power BI, the spectrum here is so what? So we start with the right side, which is actually will allow you to do AI in Azure. And you can build the completely the model in Azure and you start consuming it in Power BI. Or you can rely on the, 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 the other extreme is to rely on the pre-trained models, the cognitive services in Azure, and just call them in program. So 
Azure, the first one, the first one to the right, is Azure. Either to build a model from scratch in Azure and call it in Power BI or Power Apps or Power Platform in general, or you can rely on those pre-trained models as a cognitive services and just call it in, in, uh, in your application. Also, you can build within Power BI the model itself from scratch using either Python or R. So Power BI supports Python and R. So you can build the model again from scratch. Don't rely on Azure at all. Don't go to the Azure services. You don't have to have subscription. You didn't need to pay anything. But you can build the model completely from end to end within Power BI itself using Python and R. The limitation here again is you, first of all, you need to understand how to write Python code or R code. And also, you need to understand data science as well, because you are responsible for building the model from scratch. You have to identify your data set, train the data set, uh, build the model, uh, evaluate the model, check the accuracy, etc., etc. So you have to manage the whole um, uh, process from end to end within Power BI using Python. Or you can have uh, you rely on the automated machine learning capabilities within Power BI itself. So there is no code required here, the third one. So here, as you can rely on the automated machine learning capabilities in Power BI and build the model yourself based on your data set, train the model yourself based on your own data set within Power BI. No code required at all. There is no need to write any Python or R code at all. Then as we move forward to the right, uh, sorry, the left side, we keep increasing actually the self-service capabilities here. Because in the AI enrichment, there are some AI capabilities that Microsoft team is building now to uh, Power BI. So instead of building the model using the eight automated machine learning capabilities, by the way, the automated machine learning here, this will be the, the topic actually of this afternoon session. Here, we are not building the model. Here, we are just, we know how to actually leverage and use and consume the cognitive services API and Power BI without, again, you need to build the model yourself. No need to train the model, you just rely on the APIs. So the focus for us will be. And also, as you move forward to the left side, this is the extreme self-service component, which the Microsoft team is bringing now some cognitive services and AI capabilities to some of the Power BI visualizations. So so there is no need actually to call API or, or build the model or etc. because it's the AI capabilities is embedded already within Power BI. So if you start actually using the visual, the visual will run the machine learning model behind the scene and actually give you a good idea about how, and give you some good insights about the data and what is our key drivers. So behind the scene is running already regression models, etc. and give you in a very nice visual way uh, some insights actually so there is no need for you to actually even know that you are using AI or computer services because it's already embedded within the visual itself. So I hope the spectrum here is clear. And as I told you, this is actually when people they talk about AI and cognitive services, they basically talk about those two ones. AI cognitive services as the API or embedded in the visual itself, which you don't need to even know that you are using AI because it's already built in. And as I told you, the focus for today's sessions will be around those two topics. Afternoon will be around O2ML within Power BI, and this morning session will be focusing on the AI cognitive services within Power BI. So this is the topic of the session. So, so what are those capabilities now that we have within Power BI? So the, the AI cognitive services capabilities that we have so far they are classified under four categories here. Language detection, so we have API that is built in within Power BI that can will help uh, that will help us actually identify 120 languages so far. And the API will return to you what is language is that. So it's called language detection. Text analytics, cognitive services API as much wider than that. But what I'm talking about to you, or, and what you see in this slide now, is what currently is being supported by Power BI. But in the future, we will keep integrating some more and more AI cognitive services in Power BI. But this is what we have so far. So the first one is language detection. 
The second one is key phrases extraction. So we have another built-in API component that will actually help us extract the phrases from the text. So you pass the text, free text, comment, for example, so many lines, and then instead of wasting your time reading those comments word by word, you actually call the API, it will extract the key phrases, and it will give you what are the commonly used words in those comments. So it can actually help you to narrow down your search, or focus on particular issues, or complaints, or feedback from your customer, etc. The third one is sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis is, uh, is another API. You don't need to build your own sentiment analysis model. It's, it's instead, you can just use the API, pass the text to the API sentiment analysis, and it will give you a score from 0 to 1. 0 is neg very ne extremely negative, and 1 is extremely positive. And it's up to you to now how to use the score to interpret it and take the proper action based on that. The languages are supported now is English, French, Spanish, German, and some other languages are always still in, in the review, and they return 0 to 1 as I thought. And the last one here under vision, it's called image tag. tag. So you pass the, the image to the built-in image tagging KPI, API, uh, cognitive services um, uh, in Power BI, and it will give you actually um, um, objects, uh, will identify the objects within the image that you are actually passing to the cognitive services. So imagine, for example, if you work in a company and people, they complain about certain service or product and they post in the social media, for example, some uh, pictures of your service or your product, etc., and they complain about that. So you can pass this image to the API and it will detect some key objects actually in the pictures and we will, we will see how to use those services. So again, those cognitive services in Power BI, unfortunately, they are not free. They come up, they come with the premium edition of Power BI. So to be able to use those built-in cognitive services capabilities within Power BI, you have to have the premium edition. It doesn't come with the free edition and also doesn't come with the pro edition. If you don't have the premium edition, you still can leverage AI cognitive services, but as API. So you have to register your cognitive services API, then you can consume it in Power BI. But in this case, you have to have Azure subscription, and you pay as you go with the API on Azure. But those ones are the ones that are currently supported out of the box, built in within Power BI without the need actually to go to Azure cognitive services at all. So now we will go through a couple of more uh, demos here, just to give you a sense of <coughs> So as you see, if you, if you go to Power BI, and just try actually to to get the data as usual. So the scenario here that I came up with, we have um, feedback and comments from the customer of, from, of, for the fictitious company that we have here. So the columns, just to make sure that you are familiar with the contents here, we have ID, we have a specific topics and subjects, and we have comments here from the customers about our service or our product. What I did here is I picked some of those comments I went to Google Translate and translated them into some other languages. So the scenario here, assume that you have like international presence on social media and your uh, Twitter account or Facebook account, people, they visit that from so many countries and they post their comments in their own languages. And the scenario that we are trying to, uh, to, to do here is how to use cognitive services to be able to detect those languages in our comments first. So, after I got the data here, you go to transfer. Before November edition of Power BI desktop, we had to go to the cloud and do this work in data flow and the cloud, for those of you who are familiar with the service on the cloud. It started from November edition of Power BI desktop edition, 
we are able actually to do that from within the desktop application itself. Mm -hmm. So as you see here, As you see here in the menu, in November, starting from November edition, we can actually call those cognitive services from the new ribbon of the Power BI desktop edition. Make sure it's still in preview, so make sure that you activate it in, uh, in, uh, in Power BI before to be able to see that, because this is the new ribbon actually being released in November edition. Again, it's still preview. So the first scenario here that we will go through is uh, we need to detect the languages here. All the comments are still in English, but let us assume that we don't have this problem. We don't have the comments problem. We have just that column that has comments from multiple languages. So if you click in text analytics in here, so those are the three uh, text analytics AI, ABI components, oh sorry, AI components within Power BI that we covered in the previous slide. First one, detect language, the second one, extract key phrases, and the third one is to score the sentiment of the comments itself. So let us try one, just to give you a sense of how it works. So if you go here, detect the language, it will ask you to identify which column that you want to use. So in our case, I will necessarily definitely using the comments, which it's all in English. I will use the column that I came up with, which has some other languages in addition to English. So uh, uh, have a look here, because this is actually nothing but adding one extra processing step actually in Power Query. So if I click here, just ignore privacy for now. See, one step was added here to actually invoke the function for apply the detect, uh, detect language function. And the result here, as you see here, I have two additional calls. The first one has the full uh, name of the language, and the other one is the ISO code for, of, the, of the language. So now we are able now to detect the language of those comments, as you see, Portuguese, English, etc. So, so. so someone can say this is not very helpful, but this is actually important to me because this is actually setting the stage now to the next level, which is uh, the translation because this is actually one step toward the translation. Translation as API, it does exist in cognitive services. You still can use that as an API from cognitive services. But I'm talking now about what is being uh, readily, uh, readily available from within Power BI so far. Maybe in the next couple of months, we will have the translation here as part of the, uh, the options under text analytics. <laughs> So how to use that? You can now once once you load the model. <coughs> now you have one of the columns here. So you can click this. And So you can easily count how many comments do you have. Of course, in this simple scenario, I just translated some of them to a specific language, but you can you can actually have one of your visuals or charts in your um, bar BI dashboard to give you the counts per each one of those languages. The second scenario is Extract key phrases. And all 
also it will ask you which column do you use. So key phrases works on, of course, on English, and also it works on the uh, the different languages as well. But let us let us skip this now and let us go for sentiment analysis. <coughs> So here I'm using actually the sentiment, just to show you how to use the sentiment analysis, I'm using the comments in English, but you can also use the multi-language or multi-language comment as well, because sentiment analysis works in, in multiple languages. But let us keep it simple for now and just use the one problem that has all the comments in English. So as you see, it's very quick here. The response is so quick. Sentiment score. So for every single comment, I have a score now associated with it. Zero is very negative, one is very positive. Anything in, in between is the score of each one of those sentence sentences. So how to use that? You can easily <coughs> go to So now I can have So I have now each 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 comment and the sentiment score associated with it. I can also create So if it is than, less than 0.3, I will consider this um, as, uh, comment as negative. I add another one. If it is greater than 0.7, I will consider this positive. And everything else which is technically in between, I consider this as more. I classified actually my comments now into negative, moderate, and positive. So you can consider this as another another chart in your dashboard, and it will give you a quick way about the distribution of your the, the score of, of the comments that you have between either the negative. So we have moderate, positive, negative. Then you can have another problem here. 
questo poi per me, insomma, che più che non in modo storico è proprio il tuo dramma, che in particolare con un'altra di te non c'è mai più morto. Analisi per l'analisi. So, that's the sentiment analysis. <coughs> So the the, the algorithm in the script actually to extract them. A script is simple, it's a standard script, so you can just like have index here and have the URL of the uh, image. And the contents, the binary contents of the image as well, because we need that. We analyze this in the binary content of the image. Let us scroll this image. So the script actually, when I run the script, I have the ID, the URL, and the image binary contents of the, the, uh, the image itself. So, how to do the object detection. And we go here to the second option we have in the menu, vision, and tag M. Make sure that you don't choose the URL. You have to choose the binary content of the image as well. It itself, because this is actually where the um, the cognitive service will be using actually to the no options. So click OK. Okay, here we go. Again, similar to the key phrases extraction, it will create multiple records. Each one of those codes will open in a separate column, which is a good thing. And also the uh, associated confidence level with each one of those objects in a separate column.
now I can use actually ID here. So we can make it percentage. And now we have the list of pictures. So if I click on this particular picture, it will narrow down the, uh, the, the objects addition to this particular picture. And I can sort them by the confidence level. So according to the model, the confidence level that we have scanned the picture 99.9%. It's outdoor for sure, 98.87%. Also, it was able to detect that there is a smoke here in the picture. So it can be a lot it can be a lot of actually. So this is confidence level. Sorry? Sorry, the car? This engine here, steam, steam, highway, and so forth. But yeah, this is the limitation of, of relying on out-of-the-box AI. It's improving its, its, its own work process, but let us pick another one. Cat. Oh, so obvious. <laughs> so it depends on the situation. It's using the other cloud AI, so it's using what? So it's always connected to the cloud. Okay, it's using uh, the same Azure cloud, but but uh, API, but this is built in within Power BI itself. So we are not actually consuming Azure API cognitive services. We don't pay subscription for that. We don't pay anything for consuming that from Azure. It's because it's already built in within Power BI itself. So everything I did here is based on the main. They can do that with Google Fly. You have a Power BI desktop and you do a Fly. Yeah. You need to call it to detect the objects. You still need to connect to the, the cloud service. But once you have the object detected or the sentiment is pulled or what, et cetera, so you don't have to be online anymore. But you need it the first time because that's a cloud source. Can I ask a question? Uh, sure. So if you run uh, a month later or two months later, you may get the results. Yeah. You refresh the model. You refresh the data as you do with your regular Power BI model. Once you refresh the data, it will go and connect to the service and score and detect whatever the like, core sentiment is for, for example, and it will give you that. So, okay, Kinsey improves in a monthly data. Do you have a how frequently Kinsey improves in a, you know? How frequent is one? Kinsey improves the detection improves. How, how frequently is that? Is the model learning? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm the not sure. Is the model learning as you go? Like it, over time, would it, would, if I ran that exact same data set that you have uh -huh. in a year, would it say car? Mm -hmm. for yes, but because not because of your data. Because no, no, the no, Microsoft no. team behind the scene is no, actually right. improving their model, right? Because okay. yes, exactly, exactly. Not because of you, you are not training the model. API, you are not training any model at all. API, you are just using that as a lack of stuff. But behind the scene, of course, Microsoft team is working behind the scene to keep improving their cognitive service. Right? Is there a way to provide a feedback? Sorry? Is there a way to provide a feedback so it learns better? No, because this is not the intention here. If you need the whole closed do and improve your model, etc., you have to build the model yourself. Okay. Here we are not building any model, we are just using out of the box API. You just call the API as if you call any function in your code. Okay. It is what it is. So the last, okay. because I haven't, I haven't finished yet, so can I finish the last piece, then we can go to the question quickly. So what you have seen so far is the out of the box cognitive services within Power BI, and as I told you, this is uh, uh, no additional cost if you have the premium edition. Okay? So what if I don't have the premium edition then? 
I told you previously, the second option that you have is you can rely on the API cognitive services in Azure. Okay, so we will open a brand new file here. Okay, same scenario, same scenario, I have the same data set which has comments, I uploaded that. So same scenario, same data set, everything is the same, but this time I will not touch the ribbon, I will not touch the menu at all. I remember last time I was using this. Very good here. This time I'm using a completely different technique because I'm not relying now on the built in cognitive services with Power BI because you have to have premium addition to the data. So instead, uh, I will actually call cognitive services API, which will you pay for using this particular API on it. You can different pricing schema, and the, the, the simplest one is uh, pay as you go. So the code here is so simple. There is no need to, because it's already, no need actually to learn any specific code at all because it's already in the, um, the manual. So this piece of code is so easy. You just go to a blank query. Go to advanced error, just replace this with your code. So this code, again, I'm, I didn't touch the main. I'm just using the, uh, the code to call the API. You need to provide the API key and the endpoint. How, do you get, how can you get those two uh, inputs? You get them when you subscribe for the Cognitive Services API as a standalone API service. You will be able to get those two authentication code points. API code, API key, and the import. Then you pass it to that to your, um, your uh, script, and you just need to run the script. So now this script actually created a function, and to be able to call the function, you go to transform, add column, invoke custom, Remember, this is the data set that we have, right? Public subject, comment, multi language, etc. So what I'm now doing is I'm adding additional column myself. Like right? I'm doing this manual now. I'm not relying on the built-in uh, text analytics component here. I'm not touching that as I told you. Instead, I will actually invoke custom function. Call this score. It will ask me which function. So I take the function that it was created based on the script that I added, and it will ask me which column do you want to use actually to score the sentence. So I take the comments. Once I click OK, continue. No privacy for now. Here we go. So. We have 
a score, same concept, and they can classify to moderate, low, high, etc. So I didn't touch those at all because again, those require premium services. Instead, I just use the code to create a function that is actually uh, calling the API for the services from Azure, and that does the same exact thing: score the comments. And there are so many services here, even the broad. Of the API cognitive services in general on Azure, much broader than what we just have so far built in within our API. But again, still in preview, and the team is working now on bringing more and more of those features as a built in features in the API. So here is the high level summary between those two approaches. As you see here, both approaches are very self-service. You don't need actually to understand data science, machine learning. You don't need to know how to write platform code or you don't need to do anything at all because it's 100% self-service uh, point and clear. So if both of them can be consumed by regular business analysts or BI professionals, the skill sets required that you see basic understanding of data flow or part query to do that in the cloud or, or in the cloud edition. Same thing for uh, cognitive services, only the end script. I didn't write the script to myself, I just copied it from the documentation and you just need to pass your API uh, uh, credentials, the endpoint and the key. And uh, both, uh, yeah, the one is uh, cognitive services within Power BI and the other one it does exist in Azure. This requires premium. Uh, the AI cognitive services in Power BI require premium, li premium license, and the other one requires a door subscription to be able to consume the API. Um, the yeah, questions? Five minutes. Can you compare the results of those two? I did, and I found discrepancies. <laughs> I did. The second one was way more negative. I did. I did. To be honest with you, I was curious actually to compare the results. I found some discrepancies. I don't have explanation for that. Maybe you can take this question to Microsoft team, and maybe you can try both of them and see what which one is more. Sorry. I think the second one was more accurate towards negative negativity. Uh, again, we need we need to spend time more time on that. I was uh, quickly did uh, this, and I was curious to see that if they have the results and found some discrepancies. I don't have explanation for that, to be honest with you, because behind the scene, I'm assuming actually they are using and delivering the same uh, uh, work or the pre-trained models that they already developed in Azure. And no matter whether you consume it this way or this way, you should get the same exact results. But unfortunately, I found that discrepancies. Honestly speaking, I'm not Microsoft anyway, so talk to Microsoft. It's, yeah. Yeah, uh, two questions. I noticed that one of the images Tree, and then it said that the confidence level for the tree was 100%. Mm -hmm. So does that mean, because typically... Actually, it was rounded, like nothing okay. is like 100%. No, no, nothing. no. Unless it's a fixed comparing it to the exact image, then it would be 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one. Yeah. I'm not sure which one. Yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Uh, let, us, let, us, uh, let us choose the confidence level. Maybe you can add more discussion. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are so short. Oh, wow. oh see? Yeah. Oh, with the cats, they were like that. Yeah. 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 I think it's 100%. No, no one is set number of things. Any other? So, did you use sentiment analysis before? Or in the like work? How reliable is it? Because some of the comments started off with very charged words like, you know, rules, you just Again, you got a sentence, a score of like a 0.48 on the API is a 0.48 on Power BI. So this is a very high score for customers. Yeah, I didn't use it for my work myself, but sentiment analysis is a very debatable field, and there are so many issues around sentiment analysis because you can 100% automate the sentiment analysis because one of the biggest challenges in sentiment analysis is sarcasm. 
that's a that's a challenge, right? Uh, the other comment as well, if you sell uh, a machine, uh, that's a very common example as well. If you sell a machine, for example, that deals with dirt, for example, and you can say this vacuum uh, sucks the dirt very strongly, for example, or sucks the dirt, or whatever. But in this context, it's a very positive. But if you take it blindly to the sentiment analysis, it will give you extremely negative score. While if you put it in the context, it actually, it's, a very, it's actually doing the job that it's designed to do. So be careful of sentiment analysis. You don't have to take it like 100% blindly, but it can be an indicator for something to investigate. Any other comments or questions or are good? Okay, thanks everyone.